It's Halloween, so this DVD update, which I haven't done for about three months, is going to get the title of Dawn of the DVD Update. I think it's kind of self-explanatory. We'll start off with special edition DVDs. I have bought all these DVDs over the last three to four months, so there is a hell of a lot to get through. That's all I'll say. There's about 30 DVDs here. There's a lot. Okay, the first one I bought, I went down to London recently, and to anyone who wants to know, I will be making a London Film Festival video of sorts. First one was Tokyo Story. Uh, this is the Jewel edition. It also has brothers and sisters of the Todo family. Don't know. The next one is Jim Jarmusch Collection, Volume 1. Um, what can I say? So Jim Jarmusch Collection, worth picking up if you're a fan. Next one I picked up for, essentially because I really have been wanting to see this and it just got released on the BFI collection, it is The Innocence. I'm really looking forward to this one. This is one I'm actually going to watch over Halloween. Um, it's not a, you know, typical movie you'd watch over Halloween, but it's a ghost story, one of the classic ghost stories apparently, so I'm really looking forward to it. For the Tom Cruise collection. Yes, uh, the Tom Cruise collection contains Legend, All the Right Moves, and Taps. I imagine Legend and Taps will be bad, but I think All the Right Moves might be quite good, so I just... I can't bring myself to watch this yet. Next one, people may be surprised, but I'm a huge Audrey Hepburn fan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm a big softy at heart. Uh, Audrey Hepburn collection for £10. It contains one of my favourite films, Breakfast at Tiffany's, Paris When It Sizzles, Funny Face, Sabrina, and Roman Holiday. Those films are great. What can I say, if you're a big Audrey Hepburn fan, six films that are brand new for this year, for me anyway, that have just come out on DVD. First one, Wreck 2. I'm a huge diehard fan of the first, first Wreck. So to get Wreck 2 and be massively disappointed by it was a shock. And uh, this is not a very good film. Um, it essentially has all the cliches in place of a horror movie, uh, unlike this one, this was drastically different and that's why it succeeds as a really great horror movie, but it has none of the impact, has none of the scare factor, I just really was disappointed by Wreck 2, so that's right. The next one is one of the easily most entertaining films and one of my favourites of the year, it is Kick-Ass. Kick-Ass, this is the one disc edition, there's not much to it. I would wait for the a new edition that will be coming out with the director's cut and I really don't like this edition to start off with, mostly the cover and all that, it's not good compared to the American version. The next one is one of my favourite films that not a lot of people have really took a love to which was The Road and um, you're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. It's one of those love-hate relationships at the minute. Really hard to describe the next one, it is Dogtooth. It's my second favourite film of the year for some reason. It's a strange film, dark, funny, bewitching, haunting. It has all of the words you can describe of a really disturbing film, but has something really powerful about it. It's it's a strange film, you can't really sum it up. You sort of feel like you've got to go to film school to fully understand it, but I've watched this film twice now for some reason. This one was only five pound next, so don't judge me, but I did buy, because I'm a big Die Hard fan, Survival of the Dead. Um, it's a zombie film. It's fun. It's George A. Romero. How can he go wrong? He didn't go wrong. This one actually surprised me a bit. I actually really enjoyed Survival of the Dead. It's, you know, big, over-the-top, ghoulish fun. What can I say? This is also another film that I have clinged to really liking. Uh, this is one movie that's only been released this year. A lot of people either like it, love it, or there's a couple who despise it. But it's revenge. One if you like your uh, foreign thrillers, you know, if you want to stick away from Hollywood thrillers which are getting crappy after the town and all that. This is another list of basically cheap DVDs that I picked up over the last few months. You know, it's the type of DVDs you see in most people's DVD updates, including mine. The first two DVDs have to do with the director Sofia Coppola, who's the daughter of Francis Ford Coppola, who's just made a new movie called Somewhere. I'm really looking forward to seeing it. And I'd only ever seen The Virgin Suicides, and I'd never seen Lost in Translation, which is a movie I was really looking forward to seeing for a very long time. Next one is Marie Antoinette. I haven't seen it yet. It's by Sofia Coppola. That's the main reason I bought it. I'm looking forward to watching it just to feel good, because it does say the feel-good pick. So I'm kind of looking forward to it. It's Top Gun and Days of Thunder. This was three ninety nine for a two-disc set, so I thought that was kind of a good deal. I'd never seen Top Gun. I've never seen Days of Thunder. I'm going to watch them. They seem fun. This one is the one you don't want to admit your friends that you like. Days of Thunder, uh, I think that's actually the one people actually quite like. It's risky business. 
Yay, this is the good Tom Cruise film. A really, 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 really good Tom Cruise film. I really, really, really like this film. Pretty much love it. It's really entertaining, really funny. You know, for all the teenage movies that people basically say a teenage movie is, American Pie, uh, what's the other ones? You've got Juice Bigelow, you've got Animal House. You know, I think Risky Business is Top Gun. It's probably the best movie about teenagers. It's really good. I've never seen 2001 A Space Odyssey, never seen it, and I eventually picked it up for £3, but I think it was actually £2, that's uh, a mistake. The next one, I'm not surprised I haven't seen it, it's Clockwork Orange. The fountain is undeniably silly, it doesn't really work, it sort of dies halfway through, but uh, there is something really, really moving about the fountain to me. I don't know why, but the performances heighten it, and Darinovsky and Clint Mansell's soundtrack it's like one of the best soundtracks ever. And uh, the next one is to do with the director Claire Denes or Danes or whatever who made a movie this year and last year called 35 Shots of Rum uh, that was last year's and this year's is White Material. Both of them I saw in the cinema. Uh, I liked them but uh, I wanted to see more of her films because everyone said that those, well 35 Shots of Rum said one was one of their best White Material they said was one of her most conventional and mainstream which is a bit weird when I saw the film so I wanted to check out her first film which was The Intruder which I like quite a few Gus Van Sant films and I'm a fan of Gus Van Sant and I've never seen Malanoche I think that's how you pronounce it I don't know I'm not good at pronouncing words He directed a film this year or animated I don't know what to say called The Illusionist which is a movie I've really liked and I've been trying to see the Bell triplets of Belleville or Belleville Rendezvous uh, it's got two titles for some reason uh, for a long time and everywhere I've been they've either never had it or it's been £15 or £10. I'm not paying that much so we found it for £5 when, I, when we were away on holiday so picked it up. Great Nick who is uh, one of my basically favourite YouTubers to watch best, especially for DVD updates he usually has the best DVD updates in my humble opinion and he recommended one of his favourite films Black Cat White Cat. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this film because anyone who says that this is one of their favourite films it sort of makes me want to watch it to see if that uh, opinion can be justified basically if I feel the same way that this can be a really fantastic film. The next ones are essentially rom-coms or movies to do about relationships and love and one of them is a Woody Allen film so that should get you a bit worried. Next one is Say Anything. Uh, I've wanted to see this for a while because most because it's by Cameron Crowe, a director who made Almost Famous a movie and and Jerry Maguire movies I read liked. This one is 500 Days of Summer. You know, when I watched this film I thought, right, I'm gonna watch it again to see if I get the same feeling I felt when I first saw it in the cinema, and I did. Next one is a movie basically people hate <laughs> when it came out, uh, but I actually really liked it. Uh, it's a strange film, one that is pretty hollow and empty and doesn't really Match anything, it's gigantic. Uh, it stars Paul Dano, Zoe Deschanel from Silent Days of Summer, John Goodman, it's got an Asian child as a baby. And the Woody Allen film is, of course, Hannah and Her Sisters. I know you were expecting something else. Hannah and Her Sisters. Uh, this is Woody Allen when he went uber, uber serious, but still very funny, so I really enjoyed Hannah and Her Sisters. Kingdom of Heaven. This was £3 at Blockbuster in their pre owned section. It's a two disc edition of Kingdom of Heaven. I don't care if I don't like this film. I liked Ron Hood quite a lot and I like a lot of uh, Ridley Scott's previous films, well apart from you know basically his dramas like American Gangster and Black Hawk that I'm not the biggest fans of but I am looking forward to seeing this to see because a lot of people compared Robin Hood to Kingdom of Heaven. So, Waking Life is by Richard Linklater who did Before Sunset and Before Sunrise a moot and Scanner Dark and me and Orson Welles movies I like so I'm really looking forward to seeing this because I probably my personal opinion goes I think Scanner Darkly is Richard Linklater's best film so I'm really looking forward to seeing Waking Life. The next one is 1984 and that's all that shall be said. The next one is the best Nicolas Cage movie and it also has the best Nicolas Cage performance it's leaving Las Vegas, in my opinion, somewhere now. So, Confessions of a Dangerous Mind was another one I picked up at Blockbuster, which I've now come to the fact that Blockbuster is the best place to buy any DVD because they just have so many weird films and so many cheap films as well. The next one is by Sam Raimi. 
and it's also written by the Coen brothers. It is Crime Wave. I'd never ever heard of this film and I just saw it standing and staring at me. So I picked it up. I'm really looking forward to seeing this one, especially if it's written by the Coen brothers, because the Coen brothers are essentially the best people working in Hollywood uh, these days. I showed Innocence uh, in the first section, but uh, these are the rest of the horror movies that I picked up. Uh, some of them good, some of them not too good, but uh, some of them I actually haven't watched yet because I'm watching them on Halloween along with the Innocence. This one is a movie I've never seen, it's another Kubrick film, it's The Shining. Next one, I'm not sure if it can be classed as a horror movie, but it, it, it was one film that was put on the video nasty list, basically. It was a very... A controversial film, it was Straw Dogs, so it's Hatchet. This is Adam Green's Hatchet, the director of Frozen, which I'm going to watch at some point, I'm going to rent it, and Hatchet 2, which has just come out. Hatchet 1 is pretty terrible, in, in my opinion. It's not funny, it's crude, it's rude, it's desperately seeking a point. It's The Haunted World of El Superbesto. It's by Rob Zombie, a guy who you know, Devil's Rejects, and then after that, you can't really say you like Rob Zombie after he did the turgid, turgid Halloween films. This is my second favourite Tarantino film. I like this more than Pulp Fiction. Can you believe it? Jackie Brown. Next one is the very first Christopher Nolan film which I have been dying to see, and one that I've been seeking out and never found. It was following. I only bought it because of its title. Not because of its cast, not because of its story, not because it's going to be a good movie. It's just one you have to have in your DVD collection. It's Billion Dollar Brain. Last one. Possibly the ultimate guilty pleasure, Universal Soldier. It's DVD updates over London Film Festival coverage coming up. Possibly review of Due Date. That's it.